Hi everyone, David here, and in this video, I want to talk to you guys about some fundamentals and some concepts of 8-bit sound design using software synths. So let's just jump right in. So if you've ever listened to 8-bit uh, sounds, uh, there's a few YouTube videos on YouTube that show, um, for example, like the Super Mario uh, sound effects, and, uh, and they're slowed down by like 800 times or something like that, and then when you hear it, You'll, you'll notice that a lot of them are just uh, musical notes or patterns just played really fast. So this is the first thing I want to kind of show you guys. So uh, here I just have an uh, instance of Cyclob open. You can use any synth. I'm going to be using three different ones here just to show you guys um, some different ideas. But yeah, so this is the first thing I'm going to do is just create patterns. So I'm just going to do like a C major, scale, uh, C major triad. So C, E, G and then C, and then we're just going to re repeat that, uh, do a different pattern, So and then so go to E, G, C, E. So it's the same C major triad, just going up like that, and now let's hear this played really fast. Right, and there you go, you can have, this could be like a sound for the character going into a tunnel or up a tunnel, you know, like in Super Mario, or something, something like that. Or it can be like a game starting up or uh, loading or uh, you won a level, some, something like that. So there you go. So there's a quick idea there. But why don't we create a different one? This time I'm going to be using a uh, hybrid here. We'll create something different. So I'm going to grab a square, square wave. Normally when I do kind of 8-bit stuff, I'm always using square waves. Uh, you can use other stuff. I just, I, I find I get better results with square waves. There we go. And let's do a different, different pattern, different idea. So again, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stick with uh, Patterns. This time, what I'm going to do is just octaves, though. So I'm just going to do octaves and then go up by semitones. So this is C. And I'm just going to copy and paste it, and then go up by semitone. And let's see what that sounds like. There you go. Let's see what that sounds like. Again, same idea as this one. It could be like a level being completed, or you're coming up a tunnel, or something like that let's try a different idea here maybe something going down this time so i've been going patterns my patterns have been going upwards let's try something going down so um same idea just semitones Right, so that could be like, you're dying, you died, game over, something like that. Let's try something else. Um, so let's try a pattern going in different directions. So both going up and down. So I'm gonna do, again, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, diminished chord. So it'd be C, A, F sharp, D sharp, but then going back up, F sharp, A, C, D sharp, F, and then C, D sharp, F, A, C. There you go. Let's see what that sounds like. Right. So that's okay, not the greatest. Let's try something else. That's pretty cool. Then what we can do with that is also change the speed that, that it's played. So I'm increasing the tempo here. So that's cool. Let's try it going down this time. So like uh, characters dying or something like that. 
And there you go. So that's that. Let's try something in Omnisphere. And why don't we move to something different? So instead of doing a, so right now I've been doing uh, scale patterns. Let's try doing a, an actual like scale going up or something. So I'm gonna do like a C major scale, for example. So again, when you're picking your waveform, I like square. Something like that. I mean, it could be any of the square ones. Just I'll just pick that one. Let's see what I got. So let's go into 64 and just C major. Right. That could be. Or that could almost be like a jump kind of sound. And now. So that's so right now we're just basically using patterns. You're using scales, you're using triads, broken chords, intervals to uh, create these kinds of sounds. So that's that's the first idea behind 8-bit sound design. So the next thing I want to talk about is using uh, different parameters. For example, the glide parameter here. What this does is just it, it smooths out the notes. So whenever you're playing uh, intervals, it'll smooth the uh, the distance between the notes. So if I play, right, it just glides between the notes. If I don't have it, right, there's no gliding. You're just hearing the uh, the two notes, but with the glide, you can hear all the all the semitones or all the pitches between the notes. Right, so that's the difference. So now, if we ha add that to what we already have here. Let's increase it a bit more. Not doing much of a difference. Not doing much of a difference for that one. Let's try something else for, for this kind of idea, for something with a glide function. So I like to, to pick a, uh, larger intervals to hear more of the glide and the pitches between the notes, especially when I'm doing a glide function. So I'm just going to go C and then G, E, C. And let's hear that. Right? Now without the glide, with the glide, Let's put that on repeat. And there you go. You get complete, some, a sound that's completely different. I mean, just that by itself sounds good. It sounds like characters dying or fell or something like that. And then with this, same, uh, kind of a similar sound, or a sound you would use for a similar situation, but a completely different sound, right? So let's try that here. All right, and let's try, let's say, one of these patterns here. We'll copy and paste it over, and you see what it sounds like with it. Right? So, again, same idea. It's the same pattern, but because you're adding the glide, it's a completely different sound. Okay, now without the glide, with the glide, Right, something completely different and still usable sound. So that's the second, that's one of the parameters you can play around with is this glide button. I was just playing with the uh, timing here. So I had it really high up. If you have it too high up, you won't hear anything. And as you get it lower and lower, that's when you start to really notice uh, the difference. Uh, if you have something like Cyclop here, they have a glide button and that has a similar function here. So. All right, the next parameter you'll want to play with is the decay function. So for this, I'm going to load up massive because I find it has a good visual for, for this. So in massive, so this is plain. 
There you go, just sign the square, sign square uh, oscillator wavetable up here. And what you want to do is whenever you're doing patterns like this, let's say I'm using this one. You can also play around with the decay time. So I'm going to put the level all the way down. And then I can play around with it to kill. Let's say it's really short. Right. Let's try again. Right and now with that kind of decay time, you can play around with that. So that's one idea. Let's try something different. So let's try. Right, so that's with that decay time, if we increase it. Um, right, so it's something simple, but it adds a different effect and variation to your sound. <laughs> Another thing you could do, let's see if I can get this to work in here, is to have an arpeggiator going, or a step sequencer going. So let's do it here. So we have that sound, and if I activate the sequencer here, uh, let's see. Not what I wanted. Hey, okay. well, anyways, maybe I can do it with Omnisphere. Omnisphere is a bit better for this. I know it a bit better, so that should be a bit easier. can already play okay let's cut that part out all right so yeah so one of the things another thing you can do for a parameter you can fix is to play around with the omnisphere uh excuse me omnisphere arpeggiator here uh and you can do this with anything any synth that has an arpeggiator and it just again it just adds variation in a different aspect uh quality to the sound so um i'm just going to kind of reset it here there you go and I, all i did was load like one of these, and then let's just hear uh, without. I'll turn off the slide. Oh, with the arpeggio. you can come up with a different different sounds using that and 
think that was pretty much it that I wanted to talk about in this video. So basically, the fundamental concept of 8-bit is that you're basically just doing um, arpeggiators or fast runs or fast patterns of intervals over and over again. Uh, I mean, it could be like random notes. Like some, what I've done too before is something like this. Watch this. So go in here. I'll take like my paintbrush and I'll just like paint something like that. And then... Right, you can get some really cool sounds like that. And then if I did something like uh, a bit shorter, like this, this is a bit more randomized, so you can get a cool, some cool sounds. Right, so you can you can play around with that and get a lot of more variation with that. So just painting and drawing out uh, patterns or making it random. But that's basically all it is. It's pattern making it really fast, playing around with this the tempo or the speed, and yeah, just making it re repeat. So you're going up or down in octaves, up or down in fifths, up or down in fourths. Uh, I haven't really showed that, but if, let's say you did fourths. Let's see what that sounds like. The fourth sound pretty cool as well. So C F D G E A F B G C. These are just fourths, right? They all, they all. As long as it's it's in some sort of pattern, it's gonna sound pretty good. These are thirds. Right, so these are all going up, but I mean, again, you can play in different combinations. You can go down, then go up, go up, then go down. You can have different, like you can even search online for uh, arpeggio patterns and things like that, and you can find a lot of different ones, and you just plug it in into, into your MIDI sequencer, and then that's basically it. Increase the tempo, use a square. Um, most of the time, that's what I do anyways, and then there you go. You have your basic sounds and ways to create 8-bit sounds. So anyways, I hope that was useful for you guys. If you liked it, please let me know. If there's something else you guys want to see, uh, leave it in the in the description. Sorry, leave it in the comments. Check out the description. I have uh, my email list opening up where I share exclusive content with my email list. I'm offering a free sound packs for everyone who joins. And for at the time of filming this, I'm, I'm offering... A uh, free lesson in coaching with me to all my new email subscribers. This won't be going on forever. It's just going to be going on for the first maybe 50 to 100 or so. So uh, check the link to see if it's still available. And that's it for now. Thanks you guys so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.